Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. This is your host, Steve Ramona. And I'm, I, I got to say this. This is going to be one of my favorite shows because you know me. I network a lot. There's a lot of networking groups out there. I tell people how to, you know, help people how to network. But this guy's the true expert. I've learned a lot from him in just one meeting. I'm going to learn a lot today about how to network, how to network properly, but how to make those connections really last. And not just from a financial standpoint, but from a relationship standpoint. Justin, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's great. Um, great to be here. This will be a very collaborative conversation. I love that. Collaboration is so important. And let's start with the question I asked you in the green room before is, there's so many networks out there. Why be our epic network? And why would you do it? Start it. Yeah, I mean, I, I know why you're asking that, and I appreciate it. Um at the highest level, there is no competition, only collaboration. Um, I, I mean, I don't compete with anybody. I just like to talk to and connect with the top entrepreneurs on the planet and spend time with my family. And then purpose of life is connecting visionaries to serve humanity. So love the name of your show. So just created two companies that connect visionaries to serve humanity. So I, I mean... I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that if that's what the purpose of your life was. And and I invest well over 100K US in, in other net, if you want to call them networking groups, but whatever you want to call it. I mean, and they're all collaborative. Yeah. All, I mean, so. How important is collaboration when people own a business? You know, it's a, it's a good follow up question. Um, I was a journalist for 20 years. Um, so you don't get into that for uh, business stuff. Like, I don't know what an S corp is. I don't care about raising money. And I don't, I mean, I never even think about that stuff. Whenever I hear the word business, I either literally cross it out or um, in my head, I just blank it out and replace it with life. Um, so like, what are your goals for your business in 10 years? Cross it out life how do you like to collaborate with business cross it out life and i don't all businesses to me is an extension of purpose so connecting visionaries to serve humanity that's pure i mean connective you know collaborative connectivity that's all it all it is so i don't really even think about business owner stuff ever unless someone asks yeah. And that's interesting because my show should be doing life with a servant's heart because really their personal and professional crossover so many times. And you said that in your comment, I want to take care of my family, take care of my people that are visionaries and, and move forward. Mm. What is your description of a visionary? So the audience can know if they fit that mold or model or not. Well, I could hear the servant heart because you're trying to serve the odd. You related that to the audience with that question. So thanks for asking it that way. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah. just just the, so as background, if it's helpful, all I do, like I very simple person, I either spend time with my family, uh, my wife, who's a pediatrician and now COO of second company, which uh, is amazing. I'm very grateful for that. And then our two sons that are nine and 11, or I'm talking to slash connecting with top visionaries on planet. So Business owner stuff annoys me. Consultants, it annoys me. I don't, un, employee stuff, I don't understand it. It's confusing to me. And then most people I talk to, not all, most of them are ADD, uh, ADHD, diagnosed or undiagnosed. It's not a disorder. It's a sign of genius mislabeled by humans. And then I turn all their blah, 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 blah into a, a pattern, a pattern or an answer. So that's my hyper-focused brain. But so a visionary, visionary is three fundamental Fundamental traits, fundamental. Okay. Uh, one, one, they're a visionary. They're not a business owner, certainly not a human, not a consultant. And a visionary can be a one person and has nothing to do with employee accounts. So they see things before others. They care about purpose, connectivity. They're the world people. Ever, you know, people that are not visionaries, they're their world. They're trying to change their world. A visionary is changing the world. It's fundamental. Okay. So that's one. Two, they live in full abundance, full abundance, no scarcity, no excuses. My mm -hmm. litmus test is my father. He was 61 when I was born, 61. He was a World War II hero, shot down multiple times in combat, many times without a parachute. 
um, and you just got back into a plane. So that's a you note know, full abundance. Figure it out. Okay. I excuses to me. I don't understand them at all. Okay. So then three, this is where I think, well, I, in my world, I know uh, this is where the fake visionaries get stopped. This is where they stop. A true visionary only looks at things as investments, not costs. Only looks at things as investments, not costs. So if someone asks, what do you cost or charge? They're not a visionary because they're their own scarcity, non-visionary mindset, which prevents them from being an actual visionary. So they think they're visionaries. They think they'll live in abundance. But if you look at things as costs, non-investments, you're not a visionary. Investments don't have to be financial either, correct? Well, that's a good point. So um, you are correct in that, but uh, so I've been an entrepreneur for six and a half years, six and a half, zero business background. I still don't know what an S corp is. Do not tell me what it is. I don't want to know. I never want to learn that. I think it's funny not to know that. It's probably it is. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't. So we've partnered with multiple billionaires, multiple gajillionaires, multiple millionaires, multiple, you know, and then I think 10 folks, 10 folks that have been dirt broke, pure, figure it out, make the investment, no excuses. So it absolutely does have to do with financial um, because money is energy. That's my favorite description of money. That's from Dr. Peter Diamandis, who wrote Ford for Epic Life. I'm very grateful for that, but that's, that's what it is. And if you cannot, one, if you don't have your own energy or if you don't find a way to get that, then you're not a visionary. You're not. Somebody's listening and they go, man, I love what Justin's saying. What's but, the first step? Well, what's the first step to me becoming a visionary? Just do it. Just no excuses. Yeah, no excuses. Take action. Yeah, I mean, I'm activator one uh, in strength. Gallup, Clifton, G-A-L-L-U-P, Clifton, strength finders. I'm one in activator. Um, talk is meaningless to me. I mean, you either can do it or, you know, you can't. And then there are four things, four things. It's interesting what you just said. I think a visionary wouldn't, I, again, I appreciate you asking that question. I don't think a visionary would ask that. I think I know why you asked it, but I think they would just do it. They would just, I mean, they would just do it. They, like it's an innate intuitive thing. They would just do it. But there are four things that separate visionaries from overwhelming majority of society um for your four things so one is bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy two depression three highest level of anxiety that you can imagine and four likely and or possible traumatic experiences as a child or young adult so humans business owners consultants those are excuses visionary that's that's the motivator that's the fuel so true visionary, not the silver spoons, but um, true visionary started with nothing or relatively nothing. They're the most damaged people, most damaged with the best coping skills. So the most of those four things, almost everyone I talk to is at least three of those four, including yeah. me. The really successful ones are usually all four. Um, and then they have the highest IQ, the highest EQ, the most courage. That's why like, I don't think a true visionary would ask that question about what do I do? They would just I mean, they, have they would know. Be. It's not. It's not a title on your business card, Steve Ramona Visionary. You just don't put that there. It's not like president, owner, founder, director, whatever that is. It it is something that's part of you mm. that you become. Correct. Tremendous question. I think you're either born like this or you're not. Um, I mean, most people. They, I mean, they just make excuses. I I've never understood those. Um, but that's most of the world, which is fine. If you are born like this, which is rare, um, you can work on your your mindset. You can work on those three attributes of your mindset. The visionary abundance investment you can certainly work. You can certainly work on that. So not only are do I think you're born like this, but you can continue to be become a better visionary every single day. Lots of growth. Endless. There's no limit. Yeah. I mean, again, abundance mindset, there's no limits to that. None. Yeah. And then growth to abundance is a big difference. I think abundance is much bigger. I would bet growth is seems like uh, it's a really good. So this is why I, like I never prepare for interviews because I like to learn in real time. This is to me, this is called active learning. So I'm like, I'm learning in real time. 
So growth's a great word. It's a great word. Like business, it's fine. That's why I just cross out business and just change it to life. And then I think to your point, I would just cross out growth and replace it with abundance. I mean, that's yeah. what I would do with it. Interesting. I use that word a lot. Not that I'm a vision. I think I'm a visionary, but oh, you're a vision. No, no, no. You're. Well, a I appreciate no. you saying that. I didn't want to I, go there about me. No, but I love everything you're saying. I, I want to get personal a little bit because you mentioned your dad, and we talked about him before the show. Yeah. Are you your dad? Be proud of you today. What you're doing. I think he'd be really interested. Um, mm. He would be proud of me of being a good dad for sure. Um, he died when I was thirteen. Uh, he'd be 107 now if he was alive. Um, so, uh, he was a great dad, not a good dad. So I, and then our sons are 11 and nine. Uh, the 11 year old is, uh, his middle name is named after my dad. And he's a, my sons are like more like my dad. They're, they're like, I mean, I'm an, I'm a visionary for sure. They're pure maniac visionaries like my dad. Um, <laughs> so it's really, they're like, I see him through them. Um, in terms of like the purpose, um, that I have, I think he'd be really fascinated by that. Um, because, uh, he, he became attorney in Nuremberg Nazi war crime trials, um, and, um, was a brilliant writer and thinker. And again, no, I mean, the ultimate, no excuses. My mom's the ultimate, no excuses also. And, um, I, I do think he'd be, I, I, if he was like, I guess the normal dad age, I think he and I would be, uh, partners in some capacity. I would think so. Powerful statement. I, I, my, if I lost my dad too. And I agree the same way we'd be partnered up doing something. Let's yeah. stay on the family, let's stay on the family theme. Let's uh, talk business. I've worked with family. It's been great. It's not. You're so excited because your wife's working with you now. How's that dynamic been? Well, she'd give you a different. So my wife is a <laughs> pediatrician. You've met my wife. Yep. Okay. So if you think the opposite personality as my as me, it would be my wife. She is harmony one in strength finders. Harmony. Um I it's confusing to me. And she's the glue of the family and then glue of the the Brepic network as well. Um, she's an onboarding machine. Um, I mean, you know, like we're about to be named one of top five masterminds on planet. And, she, you know, she's in terms of a revenue aspect, which I don't really care about, but she's, you know, it, it shows her, you know, it shows it, it, it trumpets her, which I'm like, she's onboarded more than 300 K in new members and, you know, barely a quarter of being, she's, she has no business background. Um, so with zero business background, she's done that just because, I mean, just, that's just how she is. She's a machine with harmony. Yeah. And, um, I never thought she would phase out of pediatrics to do this, but she's hung out with people like us long enough that she wants to become someone like us. And the main reason why she's doing it besides getting to see the kids more and more time at home. But the main reason is she just loves talking to people like us all day. She loves it. Yeah. She never gets tired of it. No, I saw that when I met with her, she's got a ton of energy. Yeah. So you guys stay in your lanes. It sounds like she's the finest oh, yeah. revenue. And that's a good tip for partners or married couples being in business together you think well there's a couple things from that it's a it's a great question um so again all i do is talk to people like us and simplify into patterns um i that's just how the brain works and hopefully it provides some benefits to that i think it does but hopefully yep. it does here um so people like us, not always, not always, usually marry stabilizing humans, usually. Um, school teacher, nurse, social worker, pediatrician, engineer, lawyer, a, you know, a stabilizer. And she's brought that same stabilization into a company. 
Um, if you want to call it a COO or an integrator, a stabilizer, someone with, I have pretty high follow through for a visionary, which is rare. Most visionaries don't. She has exceptionally high follow through. Um, and again, with Harmony as her number one strength finder. So like the way I talk, um, um, it it's not for, I mean, it's for the very small minority of society. Maybe one out of a thousand people are like us. I've, you know, I've kind of done the math on this because you've talked to most people your life and they don't in your life and they don't understand you. And then you keep whittling it down. But so one out of a thousand, if there's eight billion, that's eight million. So that's a lot. It's just hard to they're hard to find at first. Yeah. So, so the way I come up is that. Yeah. It'd be a needle in a haystack. Definitely. Right. And then the needle becomes two and then four. And then, so that's again, why would you create your own group? Well, because you want the right needles in your, in your, you want the whole haystack to be needles. That's this is what I mean. You, yeah. you want, you want there to be no hay in the stack of needles. That would be the, the way I look at it, but I do. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And then, and then, um, you know, the way Sarah, um, Dr. Sarah, my, uh, my wife, you know, she, the way she communicates is relatable to anyone. Like pediatricians send their children to her. She's that type of pediatrician. So mm -hmm. it's just, a, I mean, it's beautiful. And, and what I've learned, and maybe this is helpful, like I'm, I'm really good at two things. One being a dad slash husband, and then two connecting visionaries to serve humanity. I'm basically useless to society besides that. And then Sarah and, and my partner, Mark Fujiwara, they're, and, you know, they're great at other things. So all my weaknesses, is just a chance to find a collaborative strength. Yep. And that's the power of what you just said. Again, we'll go back to stay in your lane. You know exactly what you're good at. You don't cross over. You let Mark and Sarah handle those things you're, you're not good at or don't want to do. Don't want to do. I don't even go to their meetings. They make fun of yep. me most of the time, which is, <laughs> I, I like that because that, um, one of my favorite Favorite quotes is from a pure genius, Lee Benson. He's a, he said multiple exits. He's a great friend. Um, and uh, then, you know, once a month, someone like him will say something truly transformational and I'll write it down. And then that'll become a chapter in a book or I'll just incorporate it in my life or during one of these things. But um, he said, the harder it gets, uh, the harder you laugh, the harder it gets, the harder you laugh. So I think that's um, like, my wife and my partner and then the developer and all their team, them laughing at me. I think that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And then I think that's a great sign for a marriage too. Like marriage is not easy, but if you laugh a lot, then, then it's fun. Kind of, kind of, kind of slows the roll a little bit, kind of makes it a little more fun. And that's well said. Yeah. I, I met your, you know, your partner Mark with Sarah. We had a meeting. Okay. I, I want to dive into this. I, I, what you've got set up is incredible to me because I Thank love Mark. You. Mark, you know, in our forty minutes, thirty, whatever, we connected. But what I liked about him is his humbleness because he's yeah. much bigger than he is. How do you find a partner like that, or what's your suggestion to, you know, find <laughs> that partner like Mark that's just really in line with you, and Sarah. Yeah. I mean, so what, thank you for saying that. I know he'll appreciate that. So I'm dead last in empathy on strength finders. Mark is third for people like us to be third in empathy is like, so he's a unicorn, but again, a weakness, the biggest weakness become the biggest opportunities to find a collaborative strength. So I don't look at him as weaknesses. I just look at him as like, Oh, I, this just needs to be replaced by someone else. I mean, who's good at it. I don't, so stay in my lane it's fine for a business standpoint. I look at it as in terms of like a, a Colby K O L B E or a strength finders perspective. Like here's my lane, stay in that. And then here's, you know, so how that worked was um, Mark and I have met two times in person. He's in San Francisco. I'm in uh, Sarah and I are in Chicago area. Uh, Mark and I have met twice in person over in more than two years. And mm. yeah, I mean, that's what Epic life's about how this company was built. And that, that was written before Sarah decided to to join it, which is super interesting too. But, but um, what happened with that is uh, I was in another, again, all collaborative. Uh, I'm in the two other 
I guess masterminds or entrepreneur groups I spend a lot of time in are one is strategic coach 10x Dan Sullivan uh, and then two abundance 360 Dr. Peter Diamandis again he wrote the Ford for Epic Life but I was talking to Dan virtually on a side chat uh, during abundance 360 so Dan not in, he's he, he doesn't run abundance 360 but he's in it um, and then I was talking to him I'm like hey I'm trying to find uh, a partner for second company. He's like, no, the key is have your partner find you. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So strategic coach has a thing called um, an impact filter, impact filter and fill it out. And here are the things that need to happen for it to be a success. Um, so I rarely fill those things out, but I did in this case. And then I started sending it to a few folks that I knew and trusted. One of them was Mark Fujiwara. Again, I'd never met him in person. Um, and then he, he saw it. He goes, oh, this is a good idea. Let's do that. So that was more than two years ago. And now, now here we are. Um, but again, I think, you know, one, knowing what you want, filling out that form, however it's done. And then like attracts like, like attracts like. A great comment. That's don't just jump on somebody because you need that partner. Make sure it's like tracks like it's a magnet, magnetism of you know, purpose, why and Simon, all that stuff yes. is so important. Yes. Now, networking, you know, we both network and you've mentioned it. Collaboration, which I love that word. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, you know, I'm networking, I'm not successful. No, what do I need to do to do different? Oh, okay. So <laughs> I don't think I, I appreciate you relating these to your audience. I don't hear that. I mean, I don't like, yeah. That. Okay. So again, everything's a formula, everything's a pattern. So I guess to directly answer that, um, I just keep making bigger investments to be in smaller rooms, but the people in those rooms are making bigger impact. That allows me to spend biggest investment in smallest room, which is my family where I can make the most impact and again, the dovetail, if you're not a litmus test for people you serve, that's hypocrisy. You create your own room, bigger investment, smaller room, biggest impact. So it's, again, it's really fascinating to see how that plays out. Okay, so I'll land the plane. I'll land the plane because you asked the question and this will relate to the people who would ask that question. So the first, if you look at it, networking group I was in, again, zero, biz zero business background, zero. Uh, started first company in 2017. So the first networking group, and it's always been an investment, never a cost. There was never a cost. It was always an investment. So the first one was $250 US a year. Then it was 500. Uh, then it was 2000. Then it was 5,000. Uh, the first level of strategic coach was 10,000. That's when I finally started to find people who like kind of got it. And then I could learn. And then there was a, uh, uh, 25,000. And now I, I invest about 50 K a year each in the, in those two groups, but those are good investments. I mean, those are easy investments because bigger investments, smaller room, bigger impact. That's a great answer. Never heard that. I've asked this question probably 20 times. And I agree. I tell people go to a pool of people that are more successful. You will, they'll just leech into you. If you, if you're open to it, don't be greedy. Don't be ego come in with an open heart, open thought and mm -hmm. collaborate with them, work with them, bring value to them. And I love that because a lot of people keep sight. They just go to a bunch of networking events. No, and go, no, no, no. Yeah. Those are they do that shotgun approach. Business. Those are human, small business owner consultant. That's the, that's yeah. the, and then again, like here, here's why what you said is so powerful. Um, in terms of my, strength which in this in this world is connecting people that arguably is the most valuable strength in groups like this because i can i don't i just my brain can simplify what people actually need and then i can immediately connect them like it's just a that's what i'm able to do and that provides endless value and in, in fact i think more than anything really because if you have the right connection a lot of these things just take care of themselves so I know that I can provide endless value with that one thing. And then everyone else in there has one or two, maybe three things that they can provide value. So it's all, it's all collaborative strengths working together. Again, no competition, no competition. And I, I would say that the Brepic network members, there's not one of them that's not in another group, not one.
there's not one where ours is the only one that they're in. Collaboration in multiple groups, higher groups, higher level. Yes. That's the winner. That's it. Well, we're running out of time here, but I'm a dog lover. <laughs> And when you told me this, I was pumped up because I only have one dog. But you got three dogs living with you. Tell me why. Uh, I wish my wife was here to answer that. Um, <laughs> so I would keep having more children. I would keep having more children. She does not. Uh, she's uh, perfectly fine with a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old. Both of our sons are uh, nine quick starts in Colby. That's uh, 10 is the highest. So they're pure maniac visionaries. Um um, but my wife, once her follow through kicks in, she, it never stops. So that kicked in with the dogs. Um, so we have a three-year-old Bernadoodle named Dr. Pepper. Uh, <laughs> we have a two-year-old golden doodle named Toffee Kisses. And then my wife, uh, she had naming rights on the, th I got to name the first two, but she had naming rights on the third one. She said we could get the third dog, but she has to have naming rights. So I said, okay. Yeah. And then uh, she has named the Newfie Poo, in case people don't know what a Newfie Poo is. That's a Newfoundland poodle. So this thing's going to be a monster. Yeah. Yeah. We've had him two. He, we got him when he was 10 pounds. He's now over 30. So that was two months ago. He's getting 10 pounds a month. <laughs> and uh, his name is Mr. Beans, Mr. Beans. So um, <laughs> you got a food exactly. food legacy there, all these dogs. Toffee, Dr. Pepper, Mr. Beans. Beans. Yes. We wanted to name the third one, Mr. Pib, but um, just didn't. Then they got the Dr. Pepper, Mr. Pib thing that then, then might have a lawsuit pending. But the. Um, <laughs> But it is, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, just because your audience wants to know this legally where we live, legally, we can have five dogs, so we could still get two more. Um, which I, I have to do. talk to Sarah. <laughs> no, I would do it. I would do it. Yeah, yeah because I'm a, like, once you do something, you keep doing it. So, and I will say, because you have one dog, two is better than one, three is way better than two because the dog can actually be the pack animal dog that they're supposed to be. They're That's actually, like, so they true. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting to see that. Because we did have three dogs, a mother and two sisters at one time. So mm. yeah, absolutely, it, it, you're right. Well, we got to end the show. We ran out of time. I want to thank you. You're very transparent. Thank which, you. Which, you know, people go, well, yeah, that's true. But you really open up. You are a high-level mind, but you're willing to work with everybody if they're willing to take the action and work with you. And right. that's, I, I love that about you and, and keep doing what you're doing. Thanks again for being on the show. Tremendous, tremendous interview. Thank you so much. Listen to this again if you want to really learn how to network and really grow. This is very organic, easy to do. And I want to thank you for listening. I hope I see you on the next episode. You all have a great rest of the day.